All right. Uh, hello to everybody. I'm really happy to be here and to see such a turnout to this talk. It uh, really means uh, a lot to me. So uh, I was uh, thinking about starting by uh, just, just yeah, of course, uh, just uh, introducing myself. But I guess this is uh, not going to be needed anymore. So I'm. Uh, Nonetheless, just, just a couple of words for me. Uh, I've been a developer with PHP for uh, 12 years, more than 12 years. I'm uh, doing full stack, uh, not only PHP. I got the education stuff that you heard about. And from just recently, I'm a contractor that's uh, going to work, that's working already with my uh, own company under the name of Tice Software. So this has been going for uh, three weeks now, so wish me luck on that. Uh, the fields I've worked in, uh, as in the presentation said, uh, quite diverse uh, SMSs, TV production, healthcare, SEO, local positioning systems, so on and so forth. The most important part, the most important part, the, the, the thing that I'm going to be doing for uh, about a year and I'm going to be involved, hopefully again and again, uh, it's going to be Bulgaria PHP conference, which, which we're hoping to uh, manage to do for fall next year. So I really hope to see you guys next year in uh, Bulgaria and uh, have a great time there. Okay, so about my talk, what is it about? Well, uh, I'm just uh, going to tell you like the most important parts of uh, DDD, the most valuable things that, that are in domain-driven design. Uh, then I'm going to tell you how and what problems I experienced when I actually tried to practice this using a, uh, a modern way in a, a, a framework that uh, follows the uh, MVC partners that we all used to. And then I'll tell you how what, what our approach was to just mitigate those and uh, do our thing, do our domain-driven design thing. Then, of course, I'm going to tell you about stage four, and then we're all going to profit. So domain-driven design, first a couple of words about that. Uh, it's uh, a term that was coined by Eric Evans in his book, Domain-Driven Design, Tackling Complex in the, uh, in the Heart of Software. I'm not going to go into very much details. It's a very broad topic. Just going to point out the really, really most important and valuable things that uh, Eric teaches us and preaches in his book. And first, first of all, it's all about focus on the domain of your problem. So we're building an application, and our application has a problem to solve. That's why we're building it. And the problem has a certain domain. So we have to focus, that's what he teaches us, we have to focus on the domain. We, instead of focusing on uh, just controllers or uh, infrastructure or database, they just focus on the domain, do everything about the domain. Next, in order to achieve that, because, you know, of course, obviously, uh, quite often we, we, we wouldn't be uh, experts in the domain, we would just, we're, we're, we're programmers, we, we, we know PHP, we know uh, networks, we know HTTP. We don't know about physics, for example, but of course physicists need software in order to do their progress. We need to write this software, so we need to talk to the physicists, for example, or chemists, or doctors, or whatever people who are in the field of the problem that we are trying to solve. So talk, collaboration with the domain experts, talk to them, try to figure out what their problems are, what their pains are, figure out how to help them, figure out the field of work. And then use the so-called ubiquitous language. Ubiquitous language is the language that those experts would speak. This is uh, the dialect of uh, their native English, the terms that they would use in their day-to-day -day work with a particular meaning for the field that they're into. Uh, Maybe some words would be different from, uh, not, not different, but they would have a particular meaning than the one you're used to. Uh, maybe they would have some sort of um, 
whole sentences or expressions that, that have a particular meaning. So use this, use it to talk to them, understand what they're saying, use this in your, in your code. Unify the code, the, the way it reads, with the, the way that you speak to them. And uh, of course, the recognition of bounded contexts, what we're talking about is every serious problem has a number of sub-problems. So recognize the sub-problems, deal with the sub-problems in their, in their own mini-universe and, and have code to deal with this, recognize where they overlap, and isolate the rest that doesn't need to overlap. So basically, these are the values. I find them very, very, very nice. They're rather simple. I mean, they're very abstract when you just talk about them like this, but they're actually very simple. So let me give you an example. Who has uh, heard about this uh, thing, the idols format? Anyone? Yeah, OK. So uh, this, this is, uh, this is a uh, singing contest show that uh, is aired on TV. It's a multinational thing, like uh, every country has uh, buys the license and then does its own version of it. So the Bulgarian version of uh, Idols was called Music Idol. And when we first knew that there was going to be a Music Idol in Bulgaria, I was like super excited because I was, I'm totally going to go to this thing and I'm going to win it because I'm a great singer. And on the next day, yeah, I am actually, I, I'm, I'm pretty good. Uh, on, on the next day, I went to work and I was totally disappointed because I was not going to be able to do this because it turns out that I was working for the company that is actually doing Music Idol and I had to build software for them. So, <laughs> so uh, let's see what the domain of Music Idol was. Basically, we had to build a software that would help the team be more productive, be more happy, and uh, you know, just do their job better. So essentially, we didn't have an idea what we were supposed to do. Nada. We don't know what the show is. We, we know nothing about it. Just build the software. So what's the first thing that we did? Well, essentially, we started talking to the domain experts. And the domain experts, these were just the people who would actually do the show. So these were first the casting team. The casting team, those were the people that would deal with uh, selecting the candidates, uh, filling out their forms for them, uh, looking at their pictures, deciding who is fun, who is not, or whatever. Uh, after the, uh, uh, we also had a team of assistant directors. The assistant directors, what they do is they go through gazillion tons of video footage uh, that used to be stored on videotapes back then. I mean, it was, still, it was digital at least, but still videotapes. And they would go through the tape and they would write down, like, on, on this and that time code on the tape. Time code is just... Uh, the second and frame uh, from, from the beginning of the tape, this happens, this guy appears, and this guy says that, and there's a flying plane, or there's a dog pissing behind him, so it's funny. So that's what they would do. Of course, the wardrobe and makeup people, I'm pretty sure that I don't need to explain what they were doing. Uh, of course, we had the producers that uh, they would look over the whole thing, uh, organize stuff, supervise over it. So these were the different domain experts in their different uh, tiny little fields of work. And we would just go to them and we'd talk to them and we'd figure out what they were doing and what the problems of each one of us was and, and build the software as it goes, communicating with the domain experts. Those were the domain experts. Of course, while talking to them, the ubiquitous language emerged because they were using different terms. And for example, a contestant, that, that, is, that is pretty obvious what it is, a list, uh, I've put in brackets of contestants, but actually no one said list of contestants. It was always just a list. So that's a good example. A list can be a lot of things, but in this particular domain, a list was a list of contestants. There were a list of contestants for the producers, there were a list of contestants for the judges, there was a list of contestants for the casting people, but lots of them. Uh, what else? Location, that would be the town, not, not, not geographical location, not uh, uh, a room, that would be the town in which a casting was uh, hold, held. Uh, the room, well, every, the, the castings, they had four different uh, examinations going at the same time, so you would go to the red room or the blue room, and so on and so forth. My point is every single one of those words and a lot of others, you know, they have a very broad meaning, but in this particular context, that me they meant exactly one thing. Okay, so the bounded contests, uh, well, 
as you see it, as, as I said, there were, there were a bunch of themes, and they, each of those themes, they would deal with something uh, different. Uh, a, a, a own, they, they would have a particular problem that they would have to solve, and then they, that they were responsible for in order for the whole show to, to get up and running. So at first, we started with contesting, contestant sign-up, so that would be just the contestants sending their emails or letters or whatever, and there were a bunch of people that would put them into these nice little forms that we created for them because there was no uh, internet uh, sign-up at this point. I don't know why. And then afterwards, they would, they, we, we had to think about how to communicate with these contestants because we had to send them letters, they had to sign contracts, they had to give their approvals, they had to go through legal and so on and so forth. After that, the castings had to be arranged, like where to go, which contestant uh, goes to where, in which room, at what time, and so on and so forth. Of course, for the, for the assistant uh, directors, we had video tapes management and we would have a database with forms in which they would describe the tapes, uh, of course, all this had to have different user roles. This is uh, pretty common for any, for any system that, that, that you would do. So these were our bounded contexts, basically. So it's pretty easy, actually, when it's put into like a, a working example. It just makes sense. It's not that hard. So uh, let's get back to programming. Let's imagine, now this, this, this all happened like a gazillion years ago. And let's imagine that it happened now and we had to build this application from scratch now. So what we would do, of course, we would choose our favorite framework. We would say like this, or we would have hated a framework and we would decide on a new framework or do whatever. And we would usually have a command that would set up a project for us. And this is the structure that we use something like this. It would look something like this. So uh, does uh, anybody recognize the structure? Yeah, that's exactly, that's Symfony. That's, that's Symfony uh, structure. So it's all nice. I mean, it's all very pleasant, and it's uh, all uh, structured in a nice way. Like, we have our commands, we have our controllers, we have our entities, event subscribers, forms, repositories. It's all good. I mean, uh, we know this stuff, right? Fine. So problem is, there is no focus on the domain whatsoever. I mean, there's focus on the fact that something is run on the command line, something is run via HTTP server, there are some entities, something is an HTML form, something is something that returns entities, twig, this is the most important part of all, twig, and of course utils, like you cannot do anything without utils, obviously. So we've lost, we've lost the focus on our, on our domain. We're now instead focusing on, uh, uh, what was the word? Um, they, 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 they. Yeah, yeah, framework and uh, infrastructure. I was looking for infrastructure. We're focusing on infrastructure and HTML and HTTP. Next thing, we've lost our ubiquitous language. I mean, we got controllers, we got entity, we got form, but we don't have contestants. We don't have uh, user, uh, not user management, but the videotape management, for example. Now, if we dig into those nice directories, we would find stuff like a contestant controller. And of course, in the entities, we would have a contestant. And probably in the event subscribers, we would have a contestant subscriber. So this would repeat over and over. Uh, but you know, yeah, you always have those words here and there in your code, but again, we're focusing on controller, not on uh, or our language. Furthermore, we've lost our bounded context. I mean, we have separation of uh, concerns in terms of whether something is run again on the command line or over the web, but it tells us nothing about what the different problems in this application are. And this may seem not like such a big problem because we're so, so, so used to it, but just, just, to, just to make the point, this uh, is actually a blog. So yeah, this, is, this, is, this has nothing to do with castings, but the casting application will look in the exact same way, but this is just a blog. This is a screenshot of the Symfony blog example. So, I love Uncle Bob Martin. And he 
coined the term screaming architecture. And what he means, what he says is, when you look at the structure of your project, the, the, the structure, your architecture, should scream the purpose of your project. I really love this idea. And not only, and, and, and not only that it's just a good idea from Uncle Bob, but it really overlaps with DDD. I mean, it makes sense. You're, you're making something that focuses around the domain, or focuses around the domain. It should, you should, your, your structure in your domain part should screen what, what this application is doing. So let's try, can we, can we try and do a structure that looks more like this? I mean, I just came up with this stuff, but you get the point. So we focus on casting management and contestant management and tapes management. And in the contestants management, we would have image galleries. So now we know that the contestants, well, they have galleries. So obviously, there are some pictures there. We have this little file here that says add note. So I guess there are notes. So also, on allow to next round. So obviously, the contestants can go to a next round. Uh, a contestant, sign up. So we, we're kind of getting the idea that maybe there's some sort of a con, con, um, contest going on, and this is what we're dealing with. So I would prefer to see this kind of structure when I open my, my app. And, and this is not very hard to do. We can just create a domain or, or a model directory, call it whatever, and do this in there. Of course, we're left with the controllers. Can we do with something about that? Let's, let's look. Uh, what, what, what kind of code would we have in traditional controller? So let's pick the contestant controller, for example. And in the contestant controller, let's say that we have the functionality to add a node for a contestant. It's really simple. It's intentional. So let's look. We have a classical action for a controller. It will create an entity that is called, oops, sorry. What, 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 what the fuck did I do? All right, can we go back? Come on. All right, so uh, we have an entity that's called node. We create it, we set the alter with the user that is currently logged in, we add it to the contestant. We create a form, uh, we create a form, and then we tell it to handle the request. I, I have no idea what the, just handle the request, all right. Uh, we check if it's submitted, we check if it's valid, and if everything is all right, then we persist it, we generate some sort of an event, we dispatch it, and we redirect to uh, a page, or we, uh, uh, to some root, or we render a page with obviously an error. Okay, that's uh, fine. Looks nice. Uh, the problem that we have, well, the thing that I don't like is that we have mixed in domain logic, uh, web logic, HTML logic. So that's uh, infrastructure, domain, and representation at the same at the same method. And where is that? Let's see. So first thing, authorization. We we always do the authorization based on the controller. Whether the user has access to this controller. Well, the authorization. I say is part of our domain. Why is the authorization should be a part of our domain? Because, very simple, it's the domain that holds the knowledge of whether a user is supposed to do a certain action, uh, whether a certain role is allowed to do a certain action, because the roles are defined by, by, by terms from the domain. Now, let's say this one. This is a casting team. We check whether the, the user that is performing the action is part of the casting team. Well, the casting team is something that is defined by our domain. If it were a blog, it would be an editor. It wouldn't be a casting team member, right? So that's why I think authorization that's, that, that, that's, that's, that should be part of our domain. Next, we got data validation. We are really used to do that also in the controllers. So data validation, why is it part of our domain? Well, the domain is in knowledge of what data it, 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 it uh, works with. The domain is the part that transforms data into information, into something meaningful, and operating on it. So the domain is the one that knows whether something is valid or not. It's, it, it, it holds this information. And generally, this whole thing here, this is all business logic. Because it's also the domain that, that holds the knowledge for, for a particular entity. It knows what a node is. It knows what a contestant is. So this is business logic. 
And we've mixed it up again, as I said, with a, oh, no, 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 with a request that is HTTP-specific thing. And we redirect into a certain route, which is, again, HTTP-specific thing, rendering a template, which is an HTML thing. So why is this bad? Why is it bad that first domain logic is coupled with delivery logic? Well, let's say that we want to have this add node uh, action happening on command line. We want to do it via the command line now. What happens next? Well, we have to make a request to a web server in order to add a node. We have to make a command line tool that would actually do a request. It is very hard to reuse because it is all bound to the context of HTTP. It is very hard to test because you have to make an actual HTTP call. Maybe if your framework is nice, you can simulate that, but still you have to go through the whole stack. And very often, now this may or may not happen, but very often when you don't have uh, the, the separation of the bounded context, you would end up with thinking about where in which particular controller an action should, should reside. And very often you would get these fat controllers with a lot of dependencies, and that would usually get turned into a mess. So what can we do about it? Now, enter an application service. So what is an application service? It's basically kind of an entry point to your domain logic. It just holds the logic for a business case. And what it does is once you feed it some parameters, some input, it would do some magic stuff. Well, not magic, obviously. It would just perform business logic. It would call other layers in your domain. It will return the result of whatever has happened. And that's it. So pretty much what it does is, is, is it does what a controller action would do. Only it doesn't know about the environment it is being run at. It doesn't care about it. It does not know about HTTP requests. It does not know about PHP sessions. It does not know about cookies. It does not know about uh, your SA, uh, SAPI, SAPI uh, module. It does not know that uh, it's going to be rendered in an HTML template or being JSON serialized afterwards. It does not know that. And because it does not know that, it can be reused in different environments. So I think that's pretty cool. It's actually really hard, or uh, really easy, I'm sorry, really easy to do. So let's look at our add new uh, use case, uh, not use case, but the um, application service. Now, I've created it as uh, a very simple PHP class that is invocable. So basically, command. I'm, I'm just using the so-called command pattern. We have a constructor that just simply takes in as arguments the dependencies of, uh, of our code. And then in the invoke method, we do what we would do in our, in our uh, controller uh, action. Only instead of passing any uh, request, we, we need a contestant ID. We, know we need the uh, text of the node. We need a user that is acting as an actor. We check whether the node is uh, not empty, so this would be our validation. We try to find the contestant. If we don't find the contestant, we throw an entity not found exception. And we check whether the user is allowed to do that. So that's our authorization part. And if not, throw an exception. Now those three ifs here, they're rather ugly code, and they can be done in a more smarter way. I agree with that. You can use your framework or library or whatever of choice. Just keep this into your service application. That's the important bit. Then it creates a node. It sets the text, sets the author, sets the uh, node to the contestant, persists, generates the event, and it just returns true to indicate that everything went normal. So that's easy. That's pretty much what it is done. Just note, there is no HTTP request. There is no template, there is no smarty, there is no redirecting to a root. So it's an easy refactoring, I would say. Next thing, this is what we are left in our controller action. Just create a new node action, uh, so, uh, sorry, not action, but the application service. Call it with some parameters that we have in the input. Redirect, handle any errors here, because just to point out, it's very important that those exceptions are domain-specific. 
we don't throw HTTP, uh, we don't, for, uh, don't throw a 404 exception here, or, uh, or, or 403 exception here. We translate this to HTTP exceptions in the controller. And then we have the render. So that's it, that's, that's all, that's all. And if we do apply this to all our controller actions, we stick those application service uh, commands in our uh, domain folder, the main part of our code, I think, I think we're already living in a better world. And of course, when doing the actual application, with the actual domain driven thing, we would have a lot of things going on in the domain, but this is not the focus of our, of our talk now. So let's recap. Basically, we have a little bit more expressive structure, at least in our domain folder. We don't care about our infrastructure when dealing in our model. We have more distinguished bounded contexts through those directory things, really easy. And we're left with like really, really, really dull controller actions. Why are they dull? Because after we do all this refactoring, everything that the controller actions we have would do is just instantiate or be injected with an application service, uh, just gather some uh, input data from the surrounding input, call uh, our application service, gather the data that uh, it returns, handle any errors if such arise, and pass it into a view and be done with it. And this is for every single one, no exceptions, linear. So this is, this is kind of boring, and I really wouldn't want to do that a lot. So let me make a quick break from the model thing and present you Action Domain Responder. How many of you have heard about Action Domain Responder? All right, all right. So Action Domain Responder is a paradigm that's uh, an alternative to IMVC. It is kind of similar, and <laughs> the graphic I've taken here, it's actually the original graphic from the guy that came up with this uh, thing. His name is Paul, Paul Jones. It looks very similar to uh, MVC. Doesn't say a lot, but this is this is how it works. The action uh, is can map to our uh, to our controller action, but it's actually just a class. It only takes some input from the environment that it has that it is being run at. So, for example, post parameters or get parameters, session or whatever. Then it calls the domain part, and the domain part is this little uh, application, could, could be this uh, little application service class that we created uh, with the, uh, so, 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 sorry. It calls the uh, service, uh, the domain part with uh, the, the input that it has from its uh, environment, collects the return data, and then passes that into an object that's called a responder, and the responder handles all the output. I mean, it's the responder that sets any necessary HTTP headers, is the responder that decides whether it should return HTML or JSON, or maybe just uh, plain text, which is to be displayed on a console. So this really, really, I'm, I'm putting this into, into this uh, talk simply because it really, really maps well to what, what, what we've gotten here so far. And as I said, we're left with very dull actions. We can do the action domain responder. I listed the very f the, 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 the steps that never change instantly in the insta instantiation of a, a, a application service, uh, passing in some input parameters, collecting the uh, result of the application service, passing it into a responder, outputting. Question is, can we automate this? Because it's like really, 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 really dull thing to do every single time. It's, it's all the same. And I would say, yeah, we can, we can totally do that. And we can just map a router to an application service and then just map the input parameters to the service parameters, execute the service, handle any errors. I mean, I, I already said this. And yeah, it's totally automakeable. And this is essentially what your front controller does. It's only, it's not called a domain, it's called a controller in your framework. So uh, depending on the framework that you're using, you can probably reconfigure your front controller to just directly call your application services. And it would also do the error handling for you, just a little bit of configuration, again, depending on the framework. Worst case scenario, you may have to write 
uh, some sort of an adapter or your own phone controller. I've done mine, and it was about 50 lines long. So that's, that's how hard it is. And with mine, I, I, I was in a situation where I had to write my own. Uh, this was the configuration that I had, and it's exactly like a root. I would map it to a, a HTTP request for, to a certain path, and instead of passing in a controller name, I would pass the uh, uh, service, uh, the action service, and then I would have a configuration telling it, map the contestant ID to the parameters ID. The parameters ID would be coming, would be this thing. Map the text note in, uh, parameter to whatever you find in post note. It's that easy. It's super configurable. And then I would just post it, tell it, use the JSON responder class, like get the output, just pass it into JSON responder. JSON responder would just JSON encode and send on JSON application. If that's it, done. Voila, that was it. I, I think that's really, really, really freakishly easy. Now, one great part is if you think about input in PHP, and if you think about how PHP works. You get some sort of a request, you have something going on, you have some sort of a response to the request. This is the exact the same thing that happens to command line scripts. You get some script invoked, you pass in some arguments, it does something, and then it outputs something on the screen. And the only difference is that in the command line environment, the, 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 the input arguments would not be called get, post, session, and so on and so forth, they'd be called argv. So can we apply the same tactics to a command line script? Absolutely. Like just instead of routing on a HTTP method, just map on a command, uh, route on a command. And instead of uh, mapping input from post and parameters, just map stuff that come from your command line. And for a responder, instead of JSON responder, because that would look ugly on a console, just use a console responder. In, in my case, this was just a class that would print stuff on the screen. Of course, you can make it more fancy. You can use your framework's uh, output stuff to make fancy colors and dialogues and so on and so forth. So pretty much that's it. And why is it cool, in my opinion, and it's important? We get a more expressive structure. We focus on our domain, and this is like the, the interesting part. This is what our application solves. Nobody cares about HTTP. Nobody cares about cookies. I mean, like, obviously, the EU cares about cookies, <laughs> but, but nobody actually does it. Just get away. We get a more reusable code because now our, our actual logic, our actual domain logic, that the, the, the stuff that actually does the thing can be reused in whatever environment we want. It can be command line, it can be HTTP server, it can be microservice, it can be a web socket, doesn't matter. You just map input to the arguments that you need to call it with. We got a more testable code because this very simple class that is the application service, well, it's just a class. You just put in the dependency, you call it, done. You don't invoke the whole uh, request thing. You don't fake any cookies or parameters. You just do what you need. Decoupling from the delivery mechanism, well, I pretty much already said about that. The most important part of the whole folder with the controllers, we can get rid of it because we don't need this. This is automated. This is our front controller or generic responder, or whatever, whatever you call it. It's in one place, and it's just something that you configure. So pretty much this is, that, 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 that's it. Pretty much this is what I wanted to share with you. The inspirations that I had for this, of course, the Domain Driven Design book by Eric Evans, the Clean Architecture talk by Uncle Bob Martin. I love this guy. And the Action Domain Responder Paradigm uh, by Paul Jones. You can find it in GitHub, really easy. So pretty much that was it. Thank you for your attention. Uh, just a couple of things to say. The slides, you can find them at slides.com here. I'll also post a link uh, and join in as uh, soon as uh, I have access rights to do that. So thank you again. Any questions that you might have? Yep, please. There we go. Hello, 
Uh, I have a question because uh, in the service that you build, the ad node, he was injecting the entity manager interface. Which I'm is sorry. I'm sorry. Can you can you can you speak a bit louder? Yes. yes. So in the beginning, you mentioned that in this approach we shouldn't depend on some framework or some library. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the service that you provided in the example, I can see that you are injecting the entity manager interface, which is part of Doctrine interface. Uh, should we be more abstracted? We should add mm, some persistence layer to that? Uh, yeah. Uh, now, first, first, really, I'm really not trying to say don't use your framework. I mean, free frameworks are there for, for, a, uh, for a reason. I'm just trying to say don't enslave yourself to the framework. This way, you can decouple yourself from the framework and still use the tools. I left the uh, doctrine interfaces on purpose. Uh, first of all, this okay. Quite frankly, yeah, you should. If 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 you're doing DDD, you should abstract this away. You should not be dependent on it. I tried to do it. It's really annoying. And let's not forget, we're doing PHP. So it it would be if you, if you for some reason want to ditch the doctrine project and uh, the reason I picked Symfony is because it uses doctrine the doctrine maps really well to DDD. So if for whatever reason you want to leave doctrine, it's really really easy to walk away from it. Just mock the interfaces, do your own thing, do your adapters, and slowly walk away. So yeah, you should. Did I do it? No. <laughs> so. Because for example, if we want to have the entities as a domain objects. If we use, for example, the eloquent, it always requires to extend the model object from the Laravel eloquent, which can yeah, be a little sucks. bit messy for the domain object. I, again, I, I just I just didn't want to hate too much on Laravel, <laughs> so I use Symfony because yeah, you're exactly right. With Laravel, I would totally abstract everything away. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, I mean, it's a very coupled framework. It doesn't have the go to be decoupled, so I guess this is not a bad thing. All right. If you want to do DDD, I mean, if you want to uh, abstract yourself from the framework, be detached from it, this is something that I like. I would use Symfony just because of this. It's going to be a lot easier to, to go away. With Laravel, I would have to build, I, 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 would, I would have to build with a framework in order to separate myself from the framework, so you're a little bit fucked, I guess. <laughs> and the second question, because yeah. uh, in the services you was uh, validating the basically the parameters from the input mm -hmm. like uh, specific for the domain that name mm -hmm. uh, cannot be empty and so on yep. and what's uh, when uh, in the UI which is the our browser the HTTP request uh, we need to validate it in more beautiful way in the messages translated and so on should we do this again by some component like symphony validation can we do validation two times, one in the service and one in the action or controller? Oh. Is it good practice to do that? Or there no, is of course, I would, I would try to keep all the validation uh, at, the same, at the same place. Now, Symfony in particular, uh, it, it has validation on the entities. So I, I just left this because I was a little bit too lazy to figure out the exact class name, if I have to be honest. But you can actually uh, use the Symfony tools to validate the entities. And then you can reuse this when rendering a form, because the, the form you're passing in an entity, and it would figure out what uh, your entity's rules are. So you would, the point is just n not where the code is and when it's being executed. Just keep the code for the validation in your domain part. Okay, so so, so you can pass you can pass the validation rule from your domain part again into the Symfony's uh, form. Uh, mm, Component. So we will need, in this case, to inject also a form interface on Symfony to this service, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, but thank I, you. I think, that's, I think that's nicer than coupling. Uh, I mean, maybe it's a little bit of extra work, but it's, in my opinion, nicer to have this in the right place. So it's your form will change eventually at some point, or you just use Ajax, you have to translate it. I mean, it's more likely to, 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 to change. You don't want it coupled with that. Yes, but in this case, we don't have this fluent exceptions. We'll have just validation exceptions from the Symfony form. And in the DDD approach, we have this fluent exceptions, like we see what was the exception of the business process, like someone doesn't have enough money or something. Yeah, that's 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 why my point was like ha when when handling the uh, exceptions from your domain, translate them in the appropriate thing for your presentation. So yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got what you mean. Well, 
Maybe we should do the validation I, I, again I, I, in the I, I, controller for the presentation layer. No, 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 no. Don't, don't do that. I would, I, would, I would put the extra effort to figure out what the, the components exactly internal workings are and try to play with that so I can translate the uh, domain efforts. As a matter of fact, it, it's not a bad thing if your view knows about your domain. So your view is okay to know the domain exception because the view is representing your model. So it's fine for your view to be dependent on your model. We don't want your model to be dependent on your view. That's that's what we're trying to to to, to not have. So in that sense, if if uh, you make your validation for a domain exception, and your view catches it. Well, that's fine. Yeah, but some other things like translating the error message for the user, it also must happen somewhere from the presentation. Uh, yeah, but what's the problem with that? Uh, if we got the, just the message from the exception, we will not get this translated message. Uh, okay, that's a tricky question. I, 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 uh, well, what I would do is uh, really not display uh, error messages from exceptions to users. Yes, that's why we must use some vali another validation layer between that other. You, well, well, look, you, if there, there, you, 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 you can you can obtain your uh, validation messages not necessarily through exceptions. I mean, you can you can have. I mean, at some point you do a validation that it's just says true or false. You can you can throw the exception in your domain, but in your view you can just extract the actual errors from your validator object or whatever. I mean, there are a lot of a lot of ways to handle this. I mean, currently, currently it seems like a huge problem because you used to being stuck to, to your framework's part. But I don't think that's such a such a such a great problem. And furthermore, quite frankly, if I have to be honest, uh, yeah, I was going to say something stupid. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so. So yeah, I guess I guess it would be somewhat problematic to translate this. I have just to, I, 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 in order to do it with Symfony, I'm pretty sure if there is a way. You just have to play a little uh, more to, to come up with an exact. Just I wanted to ask you because uh, many many people said that double validation is okay in the presentation layer, also for the user to have a yeah, translator sure, message, not? and in the domain service, just throw the exceptions, which will be another safety layer. Well, no, no, sure. I mean, valid. Uh, do, as I said, there is no. I think there is no problem in using some of your model domain code in your in your views. Just don't rely on the validation being done in the view, or in the or in the HTML form. I mean, just separate the problem. Am I making any sense? Yes. All right. Let's 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 discuss this. Let's let's yeah yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, let, let's. Okay. Sorry, I got carried away. Uh, let's talk outside. Because we need to finish, we need to leave the room. Are we just outside this door? So, yeah. Oh, we got ten minutes. Oh, we got ten minutes. So sorry. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a um, perhaps more philosophical question. Uh, yep. Uh, you came up with uh, transforming uh, transforming the problem approach from the code based approach to a domain based one. To, I, to especially. What? I especially mean the di di directory structure. You showed that you should have a contestant, list, and whatever mm -hmm. instead of controllers. Don't you feel that uh, this uh, basically makes it harder for a new member of a team who wants to join the project to catch up? Because uh, you, you know, when you, they, people uh, look for developers with knowledge on Symfony and whatnot. They won't tell, you, you know, won't tell you in the recruitment process about the domain or not too much. And uh, if you know the controllers, you can look for the, this controller, that. You have some un unknown uh, stuff like con uh, contestant lists and whatever you said. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't it making harder for new members to catch up? Mm, no, no, no. <laughs> OK. No, I really, I really, uh, it's, of, of course, it's for what makes hard what makes it hard for new members to catch up is whether your your code is a mess or not. <laughs> okay, if, it's if, a different. No, no, level. seriously. If you have if you have managed to, if your seniors uh, or the people who have uh, uh, green grassed this project have managed to to do things properly, I cannot see how uh, the particular uh, problems that are being solved in this structure are more hard to guess than than browsing through controllers. I mean that. Oh, sorry. Uh, 
my point is, you, if if you have to look up where something is happening, if you have to uh, check where a road, you still you still have your routing uh, file, so you can you can go to the to the to the class. But once you look at the directory directory structure and it tells you what is going on, I mean, I, I really I really don't see how how can this be hard. And this is a very simple concept. So in my opinion, mm, no. And about recruiters who are asking about uh, frameworks, well, that's why they why we, we hate them. Because I've, <laughs> I've been asked like a gazillion times, like, do I know Laravel? Do I know uh, uh, Symfony? Do I know Cake PHP? Duh. Well, uh, okay. You said you have to talk to doctors and whatnot about the no do domain knowledge. Yeah. Uh, now every new member to catch up should talk this to the same doctors or some someone who re uh, remembering who is remembering everything that uh, was discussed. Now, if you want to pa pass this to the HR, you have to talk. Let them talk to the doctors as well. Yeah. Is it okay? So, I mean, what was the bad thing about that? Maybe the doctors don't have the time, that's all. Well, I don't expect a new person to get on board and just be sent to the doctor so the doctor can tell him everything about the software. I would expect some uh, developer to, to, to explain about the software. And once the person is on board, he's going to start eventually talking to the doctors because it's, uh, at, at some point he's going to start fixing bugs or improving features or adding new features. And at this point, you have to start talking to the doctor, for example. I see nothing wrong with that. Okay. Now, uh, I have to admit, like, th 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 this is a valid question, like, why would you waste the doctor's time? Well, it's, it's like a retarded management question, and by retarded I mean if the manager is retarded, not that management <laughs> is retarded. How, how should I know? I'm not a doctor, I have to ask the doctor. It's like, it's... Okay. So I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think that, that a, you know, a new member talking to the business is, is a bad thing. Right. Okay. Thank you. Of course, everybody should be on board. And this may be kind of hard, but hey, ideal world, you know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Anybody else? Okay. I just okay. Said. No more questions. No. Uh, well, if uh, you'd like to discuss something or uh, tell me how much I suck, <laughs> I'd be happy to 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 help you out, and uh, see you in Bulgaria. Thank you.